I want to welcome you all this morning before we get started in our, uh, in our message today. I truly feel like this Sunday is just going to be a great Sunday in the, in the Word today. I've uh, been praying all week for this certain message. Uh, but for the past few weeks, we've been in a series called Light It Up. And last week was the end of that series, conclusion of that series. But how we do, if you've been around for a little bit, you know, uh, we do series in month increments. So we take a month and highlight uh, whatever God's put on our hearts. But, you know, we have this one fifth Sunday, as I call it, which I love fifth Sundays. And uh, so I asked God, I got, God, what do you want me to do here? What do you want me to say? And so what I want to, to kind of put forward before you today is a little bit of vision casting. Now, I know we've talked about vision before, and I can remember the first Sunday and the first couple of weeks we were all merged together here. Man, we had a good time, and we talked about vision. We talked about what God wanted to do in this church, in this body, where we have just been, uh, just, it's almost like a rebirth, if you will. We're fresh, we're ready to tackle anything. And so we talked about how Moses was led to the, the border of the promised land. Everybody remember that. It was called the promised land. We talked about how Moses, they, they led him right up into the border. God said, look, Moses, no farther. I'm going to have Joshua take these people in. So Joshua said, okay, I'm the guy. So Joshua takes the people into the promised land, and we see that. But even before that moment, even before we see Joshua leading the charge into the promised land, we have to understand and know that God makes promise. You can't have promised land without there being a what? A promise, that's right. We have to go all the way back to see and to fully understand and know this entire situation. We have to go all the way back to see when God made the promise. Before we get started with that, I want to ask you something. When you were a little kid, did you have a vision for your life? Did you want to be something? Did you see, I want to have a, a wife or a husband or X amount of kids or live in this kind of house and live in this neighborhood. I want to move to this state or whatever. Did you see that for your life? Everyone has a vision when they're a little kid about how life is supposed to look. How many times does that go completely to plan? Very little. How many can you honestly say with a, with a raised hand that your life is exactly how you planned it when you was a little kid? How many the opposite? <laughs> well, we got one back there. Thank you. I figured that out honestly. Uh, the opposite. Yeah, that's right. I mean, pretty much, you know, I wanted to be an astronaut and I'm not floating around space right now. So I might be a little spacey, but I'm not floating around space. Uh, I wanted to be all these things, but that's not what God wanted. You have to understand that what God wants for your life is more important than what we want. Our prayer and our urge should be that whatever God wants, I want that for my life. Whatever pathway God takes me on, I want to get right behind that. No matter if it's uh, something that you've done or something, somewhere where you've been, you have to surrender your life and say, God, yes. God, I want your pathway for my life. And we have to look at a man who actually said this and done this. Look at a man named Abram. Now God later changed his name to Abraham. If we're talking about vision today, if we're talking about the promises, and we have to back up and look into the promises that God has made us personally, we have to look at the promises that God has made us as a body, as a church, as a group of people who have one common goal, and that is to make Him known. Amen. If our goal is not to make Him known, then we have to rearrange our life a little bit. God wants us to make His Son known so that more and more and more people can come to Christ. Isn't that why we're here? Amen. We want to learn from that and we want to go out into the world and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So God gave Abram a vision. He took him somewhere and He said, Can you see it? I want to say the same thing to you this morning. I want you to close your eyes, not really, not right now, maybe later, but and say, listen, can you see the vision? Today's message is entitled, Can You See It? Can you see what God is trying to do? Can you see of, of what the Holy Spirit is moving us into to do? Now, we want to come into church and we want to receive from God and we want to have what we need so we can make it throughout the week. Amen? That's what we want. 
But we also want to see what God needs us to do, to stand firm and see that vision. I believe the vision of God is more important than the vision of man. God's vision for our life is far better than anything we can possibly imagine. Far better than any career that you thought you might have or want. Once we have this mindset, we can actually see the vision of what God wants us to do. God has been casting vision for years. If we think about all the way back into Genesis, the first chapter, we see the vision for the world come, come plainly to us. He says, look, there's going to be light, there's going to be night, and there's going to be day, there's going to be animals, and there's going to be humans which I'll make in my image. This is the vision that God had for us, but he, had, he loved us so much that he gave us vision too, and he gave Abram vision. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Genesis chapter 13. And we're going to look at that vision that Abram had, that God shown Abram, and, and we're going to see how it compares to our church and our life here Today And believe it or not, it does. Now, just to get us caught up on some backstory, Abram was very wealthy. He had a lot of cattle. He had a lot of, of things, and he had a lot of people working for him. But his nephew, Lot, also had, so he was a very wealthy man. He had all these things. And they were living in the same land. And so all, they had all this land spread out before him. So Abram goes to his nephew and he says, look, nephew, I want you to go out and so you'll have room for your things and I'll have room for my things. You get first pick. So Lot, being young and maybe inexperienced, he said, I'll take the best land. And so Lot goes out and, and, he, and the Bible says that he goes into the best lands and he takes all of his things and he moves. And so all of a sudden Abram's left there with the not so good land. But we have to understand this was God's plan. Genesis chapter 13 verse 14. It says this. After Lot had gone, the Lord said to Abram, Look as far as you can see in every direction, north and south, east and west. I am giving all this land as far as you can see to you, to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. Everyone say permanent. Permanent possession. And I will give you so many descendants like that, like the dust of the earth. They cannot be counted. Go and walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. So Abram moved his camp to Hebron and settled near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. There he built another altar to the Lord. I would like to have been there when God shows up. Amen? I mean, imagine at that moment... Abram's standing there. His nephew just moved. He's standing there with all his things. And he goes, God, what do I do now? And God takes him. And, and I want to say, he, if he showed him all the land that he saw, if he had a vision, he must have been really high up on a mountain maybe or up on a really tall hill. And God says, listen, look all over the place. <laughs> and he spins. And he says, I'm giving this to you. If God took you to a mountain and He said, listen, fill in your name here, I am giving you all of this. My mom would be like, what's the taxes? <laughs> <laughs> what are the taxes on all of this? This is a lot of land, God. I appreciate this, but it's 2018. You know, Trump will be knocking. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they'll be there. And so, but that was before all this. And so he goes, listen, I'm giving you all this, but I'm not only giving it to you. I'm giving it to your descendants. I'm going to give this to you. So go and walk around. See the possession. See the land that I've given you. See everything. Can you see it, Abram? Can you see what I'm about to do? And he's in awe. He can't imagine this. He doesn't even have any kids at this point. And he's an old man. He doesn't even have anything. But he, now God's given him everything. What God is doing here is giving Abram a vision. Everyone say vision. He's given him a vision of the present and the future. This is yours to take. 
And then he goes on to say that he's not only given the land to Abram, but he's given it to his descendants, and that's important. And he said, they'll be like the dust of the earth. Anybody ever dust in your house and go, man, there's a lot of dust here? <laughs> And that's how many descendants Abram had. You know, and so you have to think about this. Man, it, the Bible is very plain and specific. And it says there'll be the, like the dust of the land. Of, all over the land, that's how many descendants there are. And we know from our song, Father Abraham had many sons. Right? And we know this. And we, we know, but he didn't know this at the time. We are on the other side of the vision. We know that that land belongs to the Israelite people today. Amen? They have occupied the land and 400 and whatever some odd years later, they came into this land and they occupied it. Joshua led them into the land. After all these years, this was the vision. Whether we realize it or not, the same type of thing happened, is happening to us here at Overflow Church. God has given us a vision. Given us a vision of what this body is is to look like, what this building is to serve as, what this land will do for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Right. You know, we're going to be here on October the 20th. And we're not just having a car show to have it. We want to build a playground. We want to build something for the community. And as people come in from the community, we want to be here to share the gospel with them. They may just think, well, I'm just taking my... My kids to play in a playground, but man, we're going to meet them with the Word of God. Amen. We're going to meet them there. So everyone here should not be praying for a playground, but a place where they can meet Christ. Amen. Amen. That's the vision. It's not just to have people. You, they've, there are parks everywhere. You can take your kid to anything. But we're going to have a place here that we're, we're going to pray over and hope that people come in from the community. And we're going to bless them. God has taken us and He has said, this community, this property, everything here, these people are, is mine. And I want you to do the things that I want you to do for them. And I want you to spread the news like I want you to spread the news. Not like we do. We have to surrender our own wants and our own desires and replace them with God's. Amen. 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 It's one of those moments where he's given us this vision and it's so clear we just have to jump on it. I think we're ready in some areas and not so much in others. I want to explain myself today. I want to stop and take a second, not to preach a series, not to continue on a vision series, but to just cast a little vision for us. What is Overflow Church going to look like in the next year, in the next five years, ten years, fifty years? What kind of legacy are we going to leave for the future generations who's going to come into this building and experience God like never before if Jesus tarries? Amen? Now we have to remember also another promise He's given us that He's coming back soon. I believe in that promise, don't you? I'm waiting for that promise. And they said the dead in Christ will rise. And then we'll be caught up in the air. The ones that's left around. That's the gospel of Christ. But until then, we have to keep the vision alive. Amen? I think we're ready. I think we're ready to move forward on so many things. I'm going to go over what I believe should be our top priorities moving forward in the vision for this church. Some are spiritual. All of them are spiritual. Some are physical. Some of them are both. And we have to understand and know that this place may look differently. What we're going to improve on is what we're going to improve on to attract the people of God. Or attract the people who aren't saved. So they may be people of God. I want to take just a few moments today to understand and let us all understand though, to cast a little vision today. The first thing I want us to see and what we're going to do here is we're going to honor the past. Amen? We're going to honor the past. What does that mean? We here at Overflow Church have been blessed with a rich history and culture. With an uh, embodiment of the community for so many years. As long as Bethlehem Church was in existence and now Overflow Church continues that torch and, and moves that torch on into the future, we want to honor what God's done here. We want to honor what God has done in all of uh, everything coming together. 
Some folks who have been here for years have seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen? The wins and successes and, and the losses. We've all noticed it. We've all seen it. But the wins and the successes have been the blessings that come from God. We can honestly say that some of the losses have been blessings as well. If it weren't for some of the losses that we've had in the past, we wouldn't be here ready and have the mindset that we have to move into the future. Today I want to announce that we are going to construct a history wall. What this church has been through, the successes in this community, and it's going to be in the back corridor here, right outside the bathrooms. What is a history wall? A history wall is honoring the history of Bethlehem Church from September the 14th, 1913, all the way to this date. We're going to honor that history. We're going to look and see what this church has done, what our church has done up until that merger and that where Overflow Church came from. This will be the same time spending over 100 years to the present date. We're going to honor the history of Overflow Church with some pictures and some items we've gathered along the way. We have several items around this church that we're going to have displayed so that people who come into this church know that there is a rich history here and that we're going to honor that history and honor those who've gone on before us to plan for the future, to make ways. We're going to be reminded where we came from. If you forget where you came from, you're, you're bound to repeat bad history. Amen? History's willing to repeat itself, especially when the devil's in charge. They want us to repeat these things that's a failures. But what is a failure? Uh, uh, the mindset of a failure is never what we think a failure is. It's what God thinks a failure is. And we may think something's a failure, but God says, no, that's just a part of my plan. We have to get in, in line. We've been let down by people before. Amen? We've been let down by past leaders. But we're, we are where we are because of their failures. Their failures is God's successes. Amen? We want to honor the history of this church, the good stuff. We know that people make mistakes and they make the wrong choices. But it's our job to honor God and what He's done to advance the kingdom of God. I believe the pews that are full today are the successes that God's done for this church. Amen? When we merged, one of the top things I heard was, we would like children in this church again. Baby, we got them. All right? And, <laughs> and some on the way. Amen? So, so prayer answered. What I would love to see is a children's ministry busting at the seams is an is a, a influx of workers going, yes, I want to help out in that ministry. I want to see these things because we honor the past. We have the room. Amen? Let's use it. Let's honor the past. Let's, let's say thank you for this building that we're in. Every time we walk into the doors, we say, God, thank you for a church. Thank you that we're not meeting in a tent and it's December. Amen. <laughs> Thank you that we don't have to tear down a setup. Can I get an amen with that one? <laughs> we come in, we have church. Let's honor the history of this church. Let's make room to display some of the things that this church has, has gained over the years. We want to make room to display these things. Man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be a custodian and, and an overseer of so many rich history. Amen? And I know the leadership of this church does too. We have wonderful artifacts and, and antiques here in the room back here. There's an organ. There's this pulpit. There's, there's other things. We want to make room for those things to honor those things. But yet, we want to see where God's taken us in the future. Amen? So let's do what we're going to do. Let's, let's make a history wall. Let's, let's see where we've come from up until this moment. The people of God. Amen? Let's see what happens. The second thing we're going to do as good caretakers of what God has given us is we're going to represent the present. We're going to honor the past and represent the present. What does this mean? Remember when God showed Abram the land. 
Remember when he ushered him and he said, I want you to go and walk through the land in every direction that I'm giving you. God wanted Abram to walk the land in this way. He's saying, get to know your land. Get to know what I've given you. All we have to do is open up the front door of this church and look in every direction, just like Abram did. How many neighborhoods are around this place? How many homes and houses? How many people are in their bed right now that need to be in church? I mean, I can look all around and know we need to represent the president. We need to speak to this generation. Amen? We need to say, yes, it's about this next generation, this generation, and even the past generation that doesn't know Christ. We need to represent this generation. When I read about this and how it affects me today, I begin to think about us embedded in this community. We are here for a reason, my friends. We are here to do the bidding of God and not our own bidding. We have to get our own mindset and put it to the side. What does Sundays look like for the world? What is, how can we attract people into this house? How can we fill this place and maybe another one in the future? Let's talk about that later. How can we fill all of these things? How can we fill the seat next to you that's open? We need to be attractive to the current generation. The vision of God is to meet people where they are. I believe when the song says, come as you are. I believe that. Those people need to be here the most. So in my opinion, representing the present is being a welcoming church. It's being a, that friendly church. I, I believe we are. Amen? If you believe we are, say we are. we are. Man, that's us. That's who we are. So we need to be welcoming in two different fronts. We need to be welcoming in heart. Who we truly are on the inside is when people come in, we, they get a welcoming face. But we need to be welcoming in atmosphere. The things that we can change. The physical structure. The building. We need to make sure that every person who dons the door of this church feels welcome and at home. And it needs to be aesthetically pleasing to the community, to the believer and the non-believer. Amen? So, it's time for some updates. Amen? It's time for some improvements. We want to paint the walls. We want to get in here and put up some things around the building that's aesthetically pleasing. Sometimes when I walk the corridors of this church, I feel like the carpet has given up the ghost. <laughs> That's the nicest way I can say it. You know, we've had, some, we've had some catastrophes to the building. You know, as soon as we walked in, the air condition went out. Uh, we had a, a roof leak, and that kind of ruined some of the carpet. So what do we want to do? We want to replace some of this stuff. We want to improve on what God has given us to be in charge with. The first and foremost thing we're going to do is build this playground. Amen? For that's the community. The second thing we're going to do, and we're going to do this almost immediately, is improve and expand our children's ministry. Man, we're at that point. They are busting at the seams, and it's time for us to do something about it. So we need two things. We're going to transform the parlor back here into an elementary age class. Amen? We're going to expand our children's ministry. And number two, we need more workers in the children's ministry. You know I was coming here. <laughs> God's been tugging at somebody's heart to join up. Don't hesitate. Just do it. I promise you'll be more blessed. So we're going to transform this room back here into a kid's room. So we'll have a three to five class, a nursery, and an elementary age kids class. Three classes on Sunday morning. Praise God for that. Amen. Amen. I want to expand on that. The more the future looks for us, the bigger we grow. We're going to have to even separate them into maybe second and third grade, fourth and fifth grade, and, and continuing on. I want that for our church. Amen? Man, I want that. If we can be a welcoming atmosphere to some people, and they don't know Christ, and they come in the door, they see, man, this church has it together. Let's bless the community. Also, improvements are being made to our foyer. We're going to make that a more welcoming area. Well, how could it be more welcoming? Believe me, it can be, and anything can be improved. Amen? We're going to set up a welcome station. So when new people come into this place, they'll go right to the welcoming station. Our greeters and guides, they're already ready. 
They're ready to send them to the right people at the right time. So when they come into a welcoming station, they're going to know more about our church in five minutes. They're going to come in and sit down, experience worship, experience God, and then that person is going to bless them on the way out and say, we hope you enjoyed our service. That's the welcoming heart and the welcoming atmosphere that we're going to create. Several different things will be facelifted, including some of the stage. Some of the stage. Praise God for this organ, right? Praise God that it leaves. Because <laughs> we don't use it. And maybe somebody out there who is wanting and been praying for an organ, baby, here it is. We want to pray with them. All right? But we want to extend our stage out so we'll have more room for the talent that God's given us. We want to make sure everything has room and in place for our band so they can be more comfortable worshiping God and, and ushering the Spirit into God. See, they're leaders, and they lead the Spirit of God into this place. And if it's a little cramped up here, man, it gets a, maybe it gets a little cramped in the Spirit. I don't know about you, Amber. I don't know. Happy birthday, Amber. It's Amber's birthday today. Let's tell her happy birthday, Amber. <laughs> we'll edit that out of the video. You don't have to. But you know, you know what I'm saying. It's, maybe we can just give more room to worship. Give more room up here on the stage. Can you see it today, people? Am I just talking to the walls? It's a vision. We want to represent the present. We want to have things in here that we can all enjoy and love and experience. Some of the practical things we may do. Replace the light bulbs up here for some LEDs so we can see better. Amen? So we can read our word better. So, so we can save some money on light bill. <laughs> <laughs> Things will begin to become facelifted. Things will begin to look aesthetically better around here. So we may attract those in the current generation, the past generation, and the generation coming up. Amen? That's who we, we want to attract everybody. So our stage will undergo a facelift and improvement. Moving things to their proper position to make room, to honor things, shuffling things around. This is not a bad thing, people. These are improvements to God's house. If you walk into a restaurant that's updated and fresh, man, that's good. If you go and somebody's house looks like Chip and Joanna just left, all right, that's good. Man, that's, that's a blessing. We want to make sure God's house is the same way. I believe the reason for all these improvements are us saying to God, God, we care about what you've given us. We care about the things that you've blessed us with. We care, and so we'll do. All these improvements won't be done overnight. All these things take time, amen? And they take finances, and they take resources. So eventually, things may be different, okay? What do we do last? What's the last thing we can say about vision? The last point that I'll make is an awesome one, and it's the most important one. That's why I always save it to the end. But it's visioning for the future. We honor the past, we represent the present, and we vision for the future. We get so wrapped up sometimes in the here and now that we forget about the future. We forget about the things that's coming up behind us. We forget about how things are going to be. Remember when I ask you if you could remember the vision for your life. The vision for your, when you were a child, the vision for your adulthood. And you can say, no, it didn't really turn out the way God, the way I wanted it to. But I can tell you right now, if you're living for Christ, all in caps, bold italics, if this was printed out. If you're living for Christ, then you are on the pathway that God wants you to be. We have to be sure that the people behind us are looking at the same thing. Where does he want us to be in five years, 10 years, 30, 50 years into the future? We are setting something up now that can be carried on to the future, that can be carried on to future generations that they will cherish and they will possess and they will add on to the history wall. The more we go on, they will add and add and add to a great rich history and accomplishment for what God has done in this church, not for what man did. It's not about what man's doing. It's about what God's doing. 
future generations will have something to cherish. When I first came to church here, when, I first, when they first invited us to come, one of the first things I noticed about this church is the cornerstone on the building. And it reads, this building was dedicated to God, the glory of God, and the fellowship of man. The glory of God and the fellowship of man. I believe we're... Amen? Amen. Glorifying God and fellowshipping together. Therefore, I want to announce to you that we will be praying, and I want everyone to do the same, praying and making plans for a future expansion of this church. I want a new building here that's going to fit so many more other people. Like, this is just going to be the front row. Amen? <laughs> In all reality, we need to make room for those who are coming. And they're coming, baby. I'm telling you. Because we got what they want. I believe everyone is born with a God-shaped hole in their heart. Everyone is born wanting to worship Him because He's the Creator. So many people take that hole and they try to fit other things into it. It's almost like a little child's toy. That you have the, the circle and then you have the moon shape and you try to fit the moon shape into the circle and it just doesn't work out. Y'all know what I'm saying. You have to take the right thing and put it in the right place. We're all built with that God-shaped hole in our hearts. We need to take the right thing and put it in the right place. And we need to make sure that the future generation does the same. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. When people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whatever, whoever obeys the law is joyful. The King James Version says it like this. Where there is no vision, people will perish. If we do not have a vision, if we don't keep it fresh, then we will lose what God has given us. We will lose that vision for this church. I believe this church is prone to explode with people. We just have to make room for them. So we want to pray about an expansion. We want to pray about a new facility or an expansion onto this facility, whatever's best, whatever God sees best. So we lay down our own wants and our needs. We lay down everything else in our heart and we get out of the way and we say, God, just let us ride on the train. Amen? Just let us ride on what you want us to do. There's a moment in our life where we can say, we didn't listen to that vision that God gave us. We weren't being those people. Come on, back up. I can say in my life, I can, I can give you examples and I can talk to you and I can tell you stories where God told me to go left and I went right. God told me to stop and I kept going. God told me to go and I stopped. And I failed to see the vision in my life. Where there is no vision, the people will perish. That's what happens, and unfortunately, that's what happened to many churches in the community, churches that I, people that I know. They said, look, we can't sustain this church. We're shutting it down because they lost the vision. We will not lose the vision. Amen. Amen. We will not let a generation fall behind. We're going to be a powerful thing in this community. We just need to be set up for it. Men, let's all stand. Nothing wrong with improvements. If they're improvements. I want to have our prayer team come on down right now. What about your hearts? We talked about the building. We talked about what's going to happen here. We talked about all these things. But if we're not in the right heart, we're not going to catch this vision. Maybe today you have walked into the house and you've got a lot of weight on your shoulders and you just didn't really want to focus on the vision. You don't really want to talk about this stuff right now. You want to, you want to talk about what you got going on in your life. Well, I want to talk about that too. And so do these people right here. We want to pray with you. And we never let an opportunity go by 
where we don't take that spot and we pray and we seek the vision of God in our life. So we want to take that moment right now. They're going to sing. If you want to sing, that's fine. If you want to pray, come on up. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Because we're here to pray for you. Amen? Let's pray.